One of the reasons why literature remains important in a videological era is that whereas film and television deal almost exclusively with external reality, literature is able to go inside and tell us what a character thinks and what they feel. So exploring subjective experience is one of the reasons why literature remains relevant. Nevertheless, one of the most common problems that I encounter in the, the work of aspiring authors is that they tell the story uh, through the character's thoughts and pay too little attention to external reality. Um, when you think about it, right, uh, in a lot of prison systems, the ultimate punishment is solitary confinement, to be locked alone with your thoughts and an absence of external stimulus. So in real life, a lot of thought without external stimulus can be a kind of torture. Uh, and, and it can be problematic from a storytelling perspective as well. Consider this paragraph, for instance. He was sitting in the front room watching soccer on television. Why don't they try to score? David asked himself. The game was not holding his attention at all, and after a while he fell asleep. He was awoken by that surly guy who lived nearby, Petrus. God, thought David, as Petrus watched the game. Why does he have to turn it up so loud? Petrus started talking away and David wished he'd be quiet. It's so annoying when someone comes into your front room and natters away. It's one of those things like when you run for a bus and it pulls away at the last second. Just really annoying. David's mind started to wander and he thought about maybe getting up and doing the dishes. He'd always liked football and had played it when he was younger, but now he wasn't enjoying it as much as he used to. He started to daydream about a time when he scored a great goal when he was younger. Reading that is like the literary equivalent of being locked in solitary confinement. Uh, the, the balance is all wrong. It's all in the protagonist's head and there's not enough concrete detail. There's not enough attention paid to the external world. Now compare that version to this extract from J.M. Kutsia's Disgrace. Also, Kutsia is writing in the third person subjective point of view and has access to David Lurie's thoughts. Nevertheless, he concentrates on the external facts. He is sitting in the front room, watching soccer and television. The score is nil all. Neither team seems interested in winning. The commentary alternates between Sutu and Kosa, languages of which he understands not a word. He turns the sound down to a murmur. Saturday afternoon in South Africa, a time consecrated to men and their pleasures. He nods off. When he awakes, Petrus is beside him on the sofa with a bottle of beer in his hand. He has turned the volume higher. Bushbox, says Petrus. My team. Bushbox and Sundowns. Sundowns take a corner. There is a melee in the goal mouth. Petrus groans and clasps his head. When the dust clears, the bushbox goalkeeper is lying on the ground with the ball under his chest. He is good. He is good, says Petrus. He is a good goalkeeper. They must keep him. Much better, right? Thanks for watching and good luck with your writing.